Well, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, let me turn, make sure we turn that down. Ain't God good? I had the privilege today of having, I guess, a mid-day or mid-afternoon lunch with about five or six preachers. Certainly the churches are in a mess today. All of them are battling, and I want you to remember one especially one one man especially his name is uh, Dr. Tim Adkins. What a, he's a pastor over in Johnson City, and oh how uh, devastated he is, and uh, almost on the verge of giving up. Of course, I've been there too. Amen. I've walked in those same paths. Amen. And if you'd be honest, you have too. And it tells me that the Lord Jesus is soon to come. I got encouraged the other day. You know, uh, well, the Lord has the Lord ever woke you out of sleep? I mean, just shook you. And I mean, the other night it was like the Lord. I heard the voice of Almighty God. Of course, I didn't. He was in my spirit. I'm not going off on the radical end of things. I've never heard the audible voice of God. I've never seen blood run down the walls. You know, a lot of folks want to get radical. But I, he spoke into my spirit and said, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I tell you, it encouraged me as a man of God. Hallelujah. I know we're living in, devastating, in a devastating hour. I know we're living in difficult times. Praise God, I'm glad that greater that's he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm not, uh, uh, Lord, hallelujah. Yeah, I just thought I was in bad shape. Some of them preachers, boy, they were in real bad shape. It's just good to get around some folks, amen, that's going through the same thing we are. That we're not the only ones in the boat. And of course, we whined and pined for a while. <laughs> but we laid hands on each other. Preachers laying hands on preachers. What a great thing. Usually it's preachers fighting preachers. But preachers laying hands on preachers and getting some encouragement from the Lord. And so I came away encouraged of God. And I hope you will too tonight. And I can't wait to preach. I really can't wait to preach Sunday morning. I'm telling you, oh, Lord have mercy, just them first few verses that God's already given me, and I can't wait to get back to it. It was about 12 hours, them first few verses. I thought, man, I was in heaven. Amen? Praise God. I like when the Lord gets that way, don't you? I'm going to go back to Psalms 23, and I said there was going to be five chapters uh, in Psalms 23, but this next verse actually has more to it than what I thought when I first looked at it. And so I'm going to spend a, maybe a couple of sermons on this one verse here in verse number 5. And he said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's where I want to lay my head at tonight. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I want to say to you, praise God, I thought my cup was plumb empty there for a while. But amen, I'm glad that God has a way of pouring that sweet oil. And where it runs over, and the joy appears. And it seems like now you can uh, go up on a higher plane. Amen. And hallelujah for that. So I want to look at our Lord preparing a table before my enemies. I want to set the scene. If you'll notice in the last uh, uh, sermon that we preached on, we were walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Remember that. It is a picture, amen, tonight of going through those valley times, those dark times. And let me say to you, they are essential in life. I mean, they're needful. Amen? Amen. We, we, we understand that we are headed uh, towards the Lord's house. Oh, our destination, Brother Wheelock, is just as sure as I stand here today. 
I, there's going to come a day when the Lord comes and gets his children and we're going to wind up in the house of the Lord forever. I feel God here. But at the same time, there are going to be valley experiences. Those times, Jason, that where the darkness rolls in and it seems like the light's never going to shine again. And at times that you feel like it, you're lower than a snake in a whale's belly or in, a, in a, a wagon wheel. Well, that's real low in a whale's belly, wouldn't it? And, but we saw in our last sermon, in Psalms 23, even though we're going through those valley times, it was in those times that the shepherd is leading us to the higher ground. Come on. You couldn't get to the higher ground until you had to go through that valley of the shadow of death. He was, it was after the, the, the springtime feedings and the summer heat had dried up uh, the green grass in the valley. Boy, the shepherd was ahead them up towards the hill in order that they could find uh, that green pasture over, our, over our on the hill. But you had to go through the valley. Every experience I've ever had, church, when God begins to take us higher and higher in faith, as Paul said, taking us from glory to glory, there must be a valley experience. You can't get there without it. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. So here in verse 5, this table, thou preparest the table. We're going to talk about the table a little bit later on. It is known to the shepherds as the Massa table. Or the, the heavens uh, uh, table house. Uh, it's what it's called when you get over there on that high hill where the green pastures flow during the fall and the winter time. It's God's table house, as we would call it. And, and it is, uh, as I said earlier, it's those valleys experiences that lead us over there into that, uh, that higher ground. Let me say this to you, church. I'm going to run a rabbit right here. Let me run a rabbit. It's my message. I can run one. As God's people, we should never be content just in the valley or just in the green, uh, down in the green pastures. As God's people, we should be wanting to grow higher and higher. We should want to be uh, on that high plane of glory. We should never be content. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't ever want to arrive. I don't ever want to feel like that I've arrived in my Christian experience. I don't ever want to feel like, amen, that I'm the king of the hill. Praise God, I want to climb higher and higher for God's glory. And I want to know more about him and his glory and his grace. Hallelujah. Let me say, I've heard folks humbly say this. Uh, if I could just eat from the crumbs of the table. Well, then I understand that if there's milk and bread in the crumbs or in the loaf, there's milk and bread in the crumbs. I understand that. I understand what they're saying. Uh, a lot of Christians are like... Uh, Brill cream, a little dab do you? There's a lot of folks, amen, they get saved and that's all they need. But I'm going to tell you something, that ain't the way God ordained things. God ordained things in order that we may grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He never has intended us. Well, it's just like a baby. You know, a lot of folks say, you know, I look at little Gemma. You know, even though I enjoy this time period, I mean, she lights up my life. You know, she giggles and goggles and, and, and carries on. But I don't want her to stay like that forever. I know there's vast. I mean, I want her to walk. I want her to learn how to read. I want her to be successful. Even them teenage years, I want to see them come around even though she'll probably put gray hairs in my head. Amen? God's children, He never wants us to stay like little babies. 
Oh, come on, I'm going to preach now. Oh, we talk. We, well, us preachers, we talking. You know what's wrong with the house of God? We got people that have been saved 40 years, and they're still little babies. Amen. Just not just just not in their spiritual life, but even how they, they walk in this natural life. I mean, everything offends them. Everything, amen, bothers them. Why, my goodness, ain't it time that we get on the meat of God's Word and grow up a little bit? Somebody said, well, you hurt my feelings. Well, you need to get a tougher high, thank God. You ought to go through what I go through. Why, every time somebody talk about me and post something bad on me on Facebook, if I pout it up and got mad and said, I quit, why well, I quit every day? <laughs> Praise God. Woo! That didn't cost you a dime. <laughs> That's what's wrong with God's people. They not eat on God's word. I got to think about this the other day. I'm going to run another rabbit. <laughs> I heard people say, well, that old preacher, he just turned mean. I got to think about that. Them are the same limp wrist that would have got mad at Jesus when he went into the temple and turned over the tables and took the whip and whooped them out of the house of God. Then the same lip wrist would have turned their mind against God. There's a time that you got to be a lamb, but there is a time you got to get a backbone and be like a lion. <laughs> Woo, that's good preaching right there. <laughs> God said the house of the Lord shall be the house of prayer. <laughs> I'm determined, praise God, and we're going to get back to the basics where the holiness of God reigns and He gets the glory and He's supreme, amen. <laughs> Well, it didn't cost you a dime. So we could say <laughs> those valley experiences. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, that mean old Jesus. You know what he done? He took a whip to them boys. You know, he's supposed to be long suffering. <laughs> Let me take oh, let me preach a little bit. You know what's wrong with this world? See, when I was growing up, all we heard was the judgment of God and the mighty hand of God. But now we switch the switch. And now all that God's about is love, love, love. But listen to me. God is love, love, love. But God is just, just, just. And in the middle of love and in the middle of just, there is a holiness that he is balanced with. If he was all love, 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 nobody would die and go to hell. There'd be no chastisement. They mean there would be no justice. But his holiness brings us back to a pentamon, to an equality. Come on, equality. If he was just just, why, none of us would go to heaven. We'd all die and go to hell. But because there's an equilibrium there, he can be love, 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 but also at the same time be just, just, just. And that's how God wants us to operate as. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Well, let me quit meddling. First of all, Heaven's tableland or those green pastures in that high land is not without problems. Amen? Come on. From the time they took them, the good shepherd took them out of the valley, there was constant dangers. 
just because he's taking you somewhere, and I'll say this, I'll get to that, and just because you're living in those green pastures over, over, over that, doesn't mean that there's not going to be problems. <laughs> and there's not going to be dangers. The guy King, I don't know if you've ever read his book on the sheep and his, or the shepherd and his sheep. He says, he takes them from that valley and places them uh, over there with the danger in mind, number one, of the energization of the sheep. In other words, it takes some energy to get from the valley to the mountaintop. Amen? I don't care what anybody says. This old world gets weary from time to time. Does it not? I, I looked at Connie today and I said, Connie, you look tired. Seen it in her eyes. We're not superhumans. We just serve a super God. And from time to time, we all get tired. There is uh, that, uh, that pearl of our environment. There was danger everywhere. Let me, let me say to you tonight, this environment that we're living in, that constant drag and pull down and trouble, it'll wear on you. It'll wear on you. The, the constant battling of sin, battling with people. I know we don't like to talk about it, and I realize who's behind all of it, but people you have to battle, it gets on your nerves. <laughs> Does it not? And so it's the pearl of our environment. Pearl of our energization. But there's also the pearl of in entanglement. In other words, them sheep, a lot of times they get entangled with thorns and they pull on them. And, and if the shepherd wasn't there to get them out of the thorn patch, they'd die. Amen? It's easy to get entangled with this old world and get attracted to this old world and get caught up in this old world. And when you do, it's still going to take the shepherd to get you out of it. So let's deal with the problem. Number one, because of the certain presence of enemies. Listen to what he said. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Now, we, now David, David's got, or the shepherd has got the sheep on the mountaintop, but there is still the certain presence of of the enemies. Just as the sheep has been promised that there will be an enemy, you are promised that there's going to be a spiritual enemy against you. Amen? Let's talk about the sheep's enemy. What was it in 1 Samuel that David said about the sheep's enemy? He said, The paw of the lion and the paw of the bear hath delivered me. The Lord hath delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. I look at this as two enemies that we must face. Look up here, church. Pay attention. Amen. Will, danger, Will Smith. Attention, Will Smith. <laughs> Some of you too young to... Amen. Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. One, he, the lion mostly represents Satan himself. We have an enemy. I want to, I want to remind you tonight, we have an enemy. Simon, Simon, Satan had desired to have you and to sift you as we. The devil ain't your friend. He is my enemy. He hates me, and thank God I hate him. Peter said, Be sober and vigilant, for our adversary is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you've got to understand this. He is waiting for the very exact opportunity to destroy your life. There's one thing that God has showed me in this hour. I can't afford to let my guard down. I can't afford, amen, to quit praying and studying God's Word and seeking His faith. I'm here to tell you He's after all of us. 
He's as a roaring lion. Oh, I don't need that. I'll put it on after a while. You know how a lion does? I watched a, when I got a hold of this today, I watched a, a video of it. They sneak up on them. And you know what they do? They find the weakest one. They don't go after an antelope that's strong. Oh, they're looking for, ain't that the way the devil is? He would be different. He was trying to take down the strong, and he is. But my strength is an almighty God. Come on, come on, come on. He tries to get them that are separated, amen, from the shepherd. Oh, that old lion will look out there and he'll find that sheep has wandered off. The farthest from the sheep. And that lion, he'll say, oh, he'll say, I got them right there. And here I go. Thank God what I like about my spiritual shepherd. That natural shepherd, he might just be able to do a few little steps. Thank God I got a shepherd. The mighty Lamb of God. Amen. That's able to get to me a whole lot quicker than the devil can get to me. Amen. Woo! Bless his name. I'm glad he can do some high stepping, baby. Uh, oh, hallelujah. I, let me throw this in. I'm not going to get high of what I got preached. This is what I found out about living in the last days. You know what it's done to me? It's drove me to my knees. I've come to the conclusion after all these years that I can't afford not to pray. That I can't afford not to trust in God. That I can't afford, amen, to let my guard down. I've learned, thank God, the only hope I have is in the good shepherd of glory. Bless his holy name. Then, he's talking about the ranging bear. Not only the roaring lion, but the ranging bear. Now, what my studies, this ranging bear that David's talking about, is those bears that just travel around looking for an easy meal. <laughs> just looking. I get thinking about my other enemy. I don't only have the enemy of Satan, but I got the enemy of self. It's called flesh. Listen, I know that I've been born again, and I know I'm to be living in the newness of life, but even at that, this flesh, amen, still has an attraction. You ain't going to get out of it. <laughs> Come on. Take your halo off tonight. I had a fella tell me one time, well, you know, this used to bother me. It don't bother me no more. I said, liar, liar, paints on fire. The same stuff that I brought into my relationship with Christ, it still bothers me. Look up. Oh, come on, y'all ain't with me. <laughs> we are all drawn away by our own lust. Amen. That word drawn away is like a, a, a bait that we use as a fisherman. You know, when I was doing a lot of fishing, I'd always ask the question, what are they hitting on? Ever done that? What are they hitting on? And I'd make sure I'd throw the right bait. I'm going to tell you something. The devil knows what bait to throw. He knows what's run, what, what, you're, what you're vulnerable to. He knows. He knows. And he knows the technique. You know, what technique are you using? Are you going deep and then pulling it up? Or are you going up to, with a top plug? Are you reeling fast? Or are you reeling slow? Okay, well, I mean, fishing can get technical. I remember when I was a boy, you just pulled out a worm and throwed it out there and put it on a floater and hope something, somebody would come by and hit a, and get a bite. Well, he got Let me tell you something. Satan got a technical or a technique about him. 
He knows how to throw the bait. He knows how to lure you. And let me say to you, not everybody has the same lust. Every one of us has got a different thing that's wrong with them. Now, my lust may not be yours, but I guarantee you, you got one. My lust is that, and I say this very respectfully tonight, my lust, amen, is that Michelob light and that Coors light. That's why when I go past the beer cooler, I say, Flip Wilson, baby, do your duty. You'll not see me standing too long around the bullet beer cooler. <laughs> you shouldn't say that, preacher. I got to tell you that I got lust just like you. And the only way I'm going to feed it, run to Jesus. Run to the Lamb of God. <laughs> well, well let, me, let me throw this in. There, I don't care where you're at in life. Now, I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to get you out of here so we can watch Duck Dynasty. I don't care where you're at in life. This flesh has an attraction to this world order. God never saved my flesh. In spite of what the Armenians say, they say, oh, you're saved completely. I'm not saved completely. My soul has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. My spirit has been quickened by the Spirit of God. But this flesh is still lost as it could be. Now there's going to come a day that God's going to redeem it. But right now it's going back to the dust of the earth. It's dead and it will continue to die. <laughs> and the only way I can overcome this flesh is by the quickening of the Spirit. I look, I look at the flesh like the old Greek mythology, mythology, yeah, mythology, or the old Greek typology, Cyrene. Anybody ever heard of Cyrene, Greek mythology? I don't know if you ever heard of her or not. Them sailors would pass through the seas. Greek mythology taught that there was a Cyrene out there playing that music. And it would quicken their ears. And they had such a desire to go after the music, they jump off the boat into destruction. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, this world, if you allow it, will attract you, and you'll know it's wrong, and you know you shouldn't go down that path, amen, and you'll jump off, and it'll destroy you. I'm going to tell you, warning will rob us. Danger, 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 amen, when you come against the flesh. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Let me give you one more point. We'll go home. And then I'll hit it next week again. <laughs> there is also the continual presence of the enemy. Let me, let me say this to you. Terry, what are you talking about? Oh, bless. Love you, honey. <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. That continual presence of the lion and the bear never ceases. It's always there in the physical realm and also in the spiritual realm. I want to say to you, you are never going to flee from our enemies the flesh and Satan they're always going to be there they never take a break I read a story the other day since 3,600 3, B.C. until now there's only been 292 years of peace I thought that's doing pretty good I'm going to tell you something in the Christian life you can forget it you, you're never going to have peace. Satan is never going to cease to try to torment you and to destroy you. This flesh will never cease from aggravating the door out of you. 
You just well as to go ahead, put up your dukes, and say, I'm going to fight today. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Now, let me run another rabbit. That's why I'm so late. I've run too many rabbits. Let me point out a couple of things. We're on the high ground now. We're living in those green pastures. Those green pastures deals with blessing and abundance. I mean, we're ha by that time, the sheep's having a ball. But it did not cease from the enemy to be there. Amen. I don't care if you've been saved 25, 30 years. D.L. Moody said this. D.L. Moody said, I thought that I, after I'd been saved about 20 years and seen all there is to see, that the, that, that the battle would cease. And he said, you know what I found out? He said, after I thought I'd seen everything, he brings up something new. <laughs> Ain't that the way it is? I mean, let me say this. The devil's got a whole lot of tricks in his bag. Amen. I've been saved since June 19, 1989. And man, some of the stuff he does blows my mind. Amen. Let me close. I'm going I'm to close. 8 o'clock. It, it's, it's good. All, all is good. Let me close with this. Of course, I'm wet too, so. Even though we're headed towards that high country, don't ever take your eyes off the shepherd. You know what sheep do? Sheep can be grazing in those green pastures, and they sense the enemy, they sense the lion, they sense the bear. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost makes you aware. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I might be country, and I don't have a whole lot of sin. But I got the Holy Ghost living in me, and I understand when trouble's coming. I can feel it. But you know what sheep do when they sense trouble? They don't look at the, the, the danger. Them little sheep are going, Danger. They look to the shepherd. <laughs> Only hope that I have is looking to the shepherd when the danger comes. And we're going to get into that next week on the preparing of the table. Amen. I still got a lot more in that chapter. Ain't it good when God just opens up heaven? And shows you. There's been times I've studied and studied and studied, and it's like He closed the book on me. But then there's times when I come in and say, God, I'm weak, I need help. All of a sudden, heaven opens up. And He shows us. I don't know if it was for you or not, but it was for me. It was for me. See, the preacher's got to be reminded every now and then. Even through his own preaching. May the Lord bless you tonight. Get encouraged. Get excited. Let the Holy Spirit quicken you. We're not, hey, we're not the only ones going through the battle. It's always a comfort to know that somebody else is too. <laughs> I'll close with this. There's an old, there's an old buddy of mine. Every time he gets sick, he come in with the flu. And throwing up and everything else. And I said, BJ, why didn't you stay at home? He said, buddy, if I've got to suffer, everybody got to suffer. <laughs> well, ain't it good to know that, thank God, that we're not the only ones suffering. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Have a good week. We'll be hitting on Song of Solomon, chapter number 2. And uh, we got, the Lord has really placed that on my heart. And you'd be praying about this. There's, there's only two books that are worth reading on the Song of Solomon, which compares Christ and the church. Now, there's a lot of them out there that want to make a love story out of it between the woman and the man. But that ain't why Song of Solomon was written. 
Song of Solomon wasn't written so me and me and in, 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 in my future wife could get things right. No. <laughs> It was, it was giving us a picture of the relationship between Christ and His church. There's only actually two books out there that's worth reading. Watchman Nee is one of them. And God's put it on my heart to take my transcripts of my notes and give them to Terry and let her write me a book. <laughs> Amen? She writes a whole lot better than me. She don't use words like hallelujah and... Gooder and gooder and <laughs> yeah and all that stuff. May the Lord bless you. Let's come back. Invite somebody to the house of God. Amen. Talked to several gentlemen today, just out on the street corner. Had prayer. I bet you with twenty-five or thirty people, just people hurting. Just people. I'd see them crying. I'd say, "Well, can I have prayer with you?" Let, let me throw this in. I'll close. I promise. If you open yourself up to God and say, God, use me, He'll use you. He'll bring you to the hospital at the right time, at the right moment, find them the right person, and say, may I have prayer with you. Amen. May the Lord bless you. I'm done. You're dismissed. Hey, I'll pray and we'll go home.